On this episode of Lab Days, we're celebrating women in computer science. We're making history at the University of Florida. 22% of black women enrolled in computer science PhD programs are a part of the Gator Nation. Our lab is full of women of color. We support each other and we stand strong together. We have a haven at UF. However, this is not the case for other African-American women in computer science. This past April, UF's Computer and Information Science and Engineering Department hosted its first IMCS Women's Summit. UF hosted and encouraged women from three different universities. The women shared their research, discussed their struggles, and planned for the future. We interviewed the women in our lab to find out about their struggles and triumphs as a woman in computer science. My first year of school, because I was the only, well, I was in electrical engineering at the time, but still I was the only like female in my classes. My first computer science class in high school, there were only two girls, myself and my friend. Maybe just the first semester, people weren't necessarily flocking to be with all the girls. So all throughout undergrad, the girls, we always had a girl group. Um, but they quickly learned that they probably should have to the girls because we <laughs> had it together most of the time. I, I mean, I like it. I think sometimes you get tempted to kind of want to blend in because they're, when you leave out of this lab, there's so few women in computing, especially women of color. Everything that you do kind of has some type of impact because there's so much, there's so much within the space that you can kind of trailblaze. Like there's so much um, that women haven't like touched and like you can be the first woman to do this, first woman to do that. Talking, of course, we're still a minority, but I'm used to that because I'm a minority um, due to my race. Um, I think it gives us motivation to do more, to show that, hey, we're just as good as the guys. So it's an extra push if you don't have it within yourself already. I think it's very motivating to stand out and be like, hey, I'm a girl, I can do this too. I probably can do it better than you, so. It's great. It's like other things that are great for being a woman, so. I like that I'm a woman in computing and that's great. And it's not just that um, we don't have women in computing, we, we don't have um, women in computing roles in our popular media. So like, <laughs> you know, all of the scientists on the Big Bang Theory are dudes. Then eventually there's some women, but they're, they're the girlfriends, so. Um, because diverse teams yield better solutions. So if you, I mean, men probably could design something for women, but if you're designing and developing something for a population that you have no experience being, it's kind of hard to know what we like and what we want. So when you have women on the design and development team, they can put that input in there. Because young girls just don't know that we're there. We are resilient, creative, and inspiring individuals. Switchboard is the segment where we feature technology in real world scenarios. Fruitfly. This Switchboard segment is about drones. Did you know? that you can use drones in professions outside of computer science. Large industrial drones are used in the field of agriculture to help apply pesticides and detect diseased plants, among many other things. We interviewed lab member Brianna Posadas about her master's research relating to imaging drones in agriculture. So drones are used in agriculture mostly to apply precision agriculture. So it's this idea that um, an agricultural field is very large and there are different areas that are going to need different resources, um, different attention than other parts of the field. So some of the drones are taking just regular RGB images like the kind that you can take with your cell phone with a regular everyday camera. 
Some of these drones are taking hyperspectral images, which utilize different aspects of the electromagnetic um, spectrum. So they're looking at different wavelengths, which gives us different information about the crop. So for example, you can determine which parts of the field are, is dehydrated by, using, by looking at different, uh, different wavelengths. So if a farmer were to use it, they wouldn't necessarily need to know how to fly a drone. We can program coordinates and so it would fly autonomously. So they would just press the button to start um, the algorithm. The drone would just take off, it would know where to go, it would know where the waypoints are, and then it would come back and download the information. As a lab, we decided to have a little fun and envision the real world application of drones in agriculture. We visited Brown's farm for their annual strawberry you pick. If Brown's farm were a large industrial sized farm, an agricultural drone could be used on its land. This hobby drone can easily fly over small plots of land. An industrial drone can map and serve large scale farms with ease. Working on research, lab projects and long flights. Lab days, lab days. Changing the world, lab days. whatever.